Welcome back to the Accessible Art History YouTube channel. This week, we are going to be covering some of the incredible works that can be found in St. Peter's Basilica. Not only is this church the center of Vatican City, but it serves as the heart of the Catholic Church. It was here on the Vatican Hill that the Apostle and first Pope Peter was martyred by crucifixion in 64 CE. He was also buried here and the site has been sacred ever since. The current church was built during the Renaissance and Baroque eras, replacing the original Constantinian Basilica. If you would like to watch our video on the architectural side of St. Peter's, it's linked in both the description box and in the eye in the top right hand corner. The art within the basilica is not only beautiful, but it was created to glorify the Catholic faith. This sculpture is perhaps the most famous piece in all of St. Peter's. It is called the Pietà and was sculpted by Michelangelo between 1498 and 1500. This was quite early in his career and it is the only work that he signed. The beauty of the piece and the clear evidence of his skill helped to launch his career. The Pietà theme was quite popular in Northern Europe and around this time it was slowly making its way to Italy. It shows the Virgin Mary cradling the body of Christ shortly after he died on the cross. However, despite the tragedy of this event, both Mary and Jesus are portrayed as rather serene. The Virgin looks down at her son with a passive, peaceful look on her face. It seems as if she's accepted his fate and no longer feels grief. She is also quite young, Michelangelo sculpted her as if she had never known the stress or hardship that sin wrought on the body and soul. Christ's body is draped across her lap. He looks as if he is simply taking a nap. Michelangelo chose to carve the wounds from the cross in such a way that they can barely be seen. It sends the message that his death was not final and nothing could defeat the power of God. This lines up with the Renaissance ideals of classical beauty and naturalism. Located in the crossing of the church, this sculpture of St. Veronica is essentially the emotional opposite of Michelangelo's Pietà. It was created in 1629 by Baroque artist Francesco Mochi, and has caused quite a stir ever since it was installed. St. Veronica's story is quite fascinating. At one point in her life, Jesus helped cure her of an illness. She would always remember his kindness and compassion. When Christ was forced to carry his cross, Veronica rushed out of the crowd and wiped the sweat from his brow. Miraculously, Jesus' face left an imprint on the cloth. This became known as the Veil of Veronica and is one of the most important relics in the Catholic Church. I have linked another video about this class of relics called Ejriopita in the description bar and in the eye above. This piece sits underneath the balcony where the veil is shown on special occasions. It also sits on top of the first stone laid down for the new building in 1506. This was a place of honor for the sculpture, but some people believed that it did not deserve it. Mochi clearly sculpting in the Baroque style. Veronica sweeps into the space. She looks as if she was running and then frozen in time. She stretches the veil out to the side, showing the viewer the miracle that had occurred. The expression on her face is a combination of awe and horror. Since its installation, viewers have found St. Veronica to be too emotional and frantic, inappropriate feelings for such a sacred space. The next work we are going to discuss features the main man himself, St. Peter. As mentioned earlier, he is the patron of this church and the first pope, so it was important to have a statue representing him within the basilica. There is some debate about the age of this work. It is made of bronze and was possibly created by artist and architect Arnolfo de Cambio around the 12th century. Some historians believe, however, that this is a casting that dates from the 5th century. Regardless of its age, this piece has become a focal point of St. Peter's. He sits proud and tall with the traditional iconographic details of a halo the keys to the kingdom of heaven, and one hand held up in a gesture of blessing. Sculpted in the classical, late antique period style, there is a weight to this piece. St. Peter's head is covered in thick curls and a beard, and the folds of his robes drape heavily over his body. When pilgrims visit the church, they make a point to stop in front of the statue and pray. They also touch or kiss the foot of St. Peter to show their reverence. Over the centuries, the bronze has been worn down so that the details of his foot are no longer visible. No study of St. Peter's would be complete without discussion about Gian Lorenzo Bernini. Not only was he one of the primary architects, but he also helped to decorate the space. One of his most spectacular pieces is this sculpture. It is called the Vision of Constantine, and it dates from 1670. It shows the moment when Constantine saw the sign of God in the sky. He was fighting for control of the Roman Empire at Milvian Bridge. When Constantine looked up, he saw a cross. He took this as a sign that, if he converted to Christianity, he would emerge victorious. During his reign, Constantine legalized Christianity and built the original basilica. He is seen as one of the secular heroes of the faith. 
This sculpture is truly a Baroque masterpiece. Bernini created drama in the pose of the rearing horse and the swirling cloths. Constantine looks up in awe and disbelief, mimicking what the viewer feels when they are observing the piece. Making the work even more spectacular is its location. Bernini placed it at the top of the Scala Regina, a staircase he designed. When light streams in through the windows, it creates the effect of a vision coming down from heaven, just like the one Constantine witnessed 2,000 years ago. These are only a few of the countless artistic treasures held within St. Peter's Basilica. From medieval masterpieces to Baroque visions, it's easy to get lost in the wonder. This video didn't even dive into the chapel and tomb art, so keep an eye out for that one in the future.